Hey guys, today I'm going to change out the dip tube on my failing hot water heater. You know, one of the commonest causes of poor hot water heater output is a failing dip tube. And the good news is that you can change a dip tube out for about $10 worth of parts and about an hour's worth of your time. It's well worth doing. Let me show you how I change mine out. So by far the commonest and about the only symptom of a failing dip tube is a reduction in hot water output. So people complain that their hot water peter used to give them real hot showers, but lately they seem to be getting lukewarm showers at best. By far the commonest cause of this is a failing dip tube. So the first thing most of us will do when we face a suspicion of a failing hot water heater is to go and have a look at it. There are no leaks at the bottom. And the input seems to be okay. Really, it looks pretty normal. This is a gas hot water heater and you can see I've got the thermostat turned all the way to hot. The pilot light seems to be working okay. What's the problem? So one of the first things that I did is I flushed out the hot water heater to see if there was any debris floating in the bottom of it. But as it turns out, this hot water heater is nice and clear. Okay, let's do a little experiment. I'm going to time this. So I'm going to turn the hot water on full blast. We're going to go over to the shower and do the same thing. So we got the hot water flowing full blast. Now, let's walk over to the hot water heater and see how quickly the hot water heater recognizes that it's too cold and turns itself on. So you can see the pilot light there. Now what's happening is hot water is rushing out of the hot water heater. And to fill the void, you've got cold water rushing into the hot water heater. Now in a well-designed hot water heater, that cold water should be filling the lower part of the heater, right adjacent to the thermostat, the control. And when the control senses that cold water, it should immediately turn the burners on. But here we are, and the burners are not on yet. We're out at a minute four seconds, still no burners. There we are, finally. So the device we're going to change out is right here. This is called a dip tube. I bought this at a local hardware store for $6.50. There's not much to it really. It's a long plastic tube, about, about two and a half feet long. It's hollow. And let's look closely at it here. You see it's got a double threaded end. These are both right hand threads. And then up here you've got a little port, a little hole that's apparently designed to prevent siphoning. So if you look here, there's the end. So to understand how this works, you need to understand a bit about the anatomy as to how a hot water heater is designed. Ideally, you want the cold water to enter from below, but from a structural and engineering perspective, it's actually easier to have the pipes coming in from above. And so what we have here is the cold water intake with a shutoff valve. Water goes down into the tube, but it requires a dip tube, a plastic tube, to shuttle the cold water right down to the bottom of the hot water tank to allow the water to be heated. Now that does two purposes. It serves two purposes. First, the cold water is immediately in contact with the thermostat, which turns the hot water uh, heater on. Secondly, the cold water is heated quickly, and there's no shuttling of cold water across to the outlet side. Now this is the outlet pipe, and of course it's warm. And what typically happens is, in an ideal hot water heater, is the cold water at the bottom is heated up, the cold water uh, becomes hot, it rises, and then the hot water at the very top of the hot water heater is shuttled off. That's what works in an ideal situation, but in this situation, of course, we have a dip tube that's defective. As it turns out, these tubes are subject to corrosion, calcium deposits, and degeneration with time. And so a dip tube can fracture, it can break off, it can split or crack and become corroded. And the next thing you know, instead of the cold water being shuttled all the way down to the bottom of the tank, it ends up shuttling across near the middle. That results in a reduced responsiveness of the thermostat to changes in temperature within the hot water tank.
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to turn off the intake valve. That's easy enough. The second thing, of course, is to turn one of the taps on and let all the hot water out of the system so that there's no extra pressure in this tube. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is the fluid in this tube is going to re uh, move retrograde backwards and you're going to create a water mass on this side when you cut that piping. Also, it's a good idea to relieve the pressure at the top of the house as well. What's happening here is that air is being sucked back into the system. That air is going to allow the system to purge itself more effectively, resulting in less water leakage when you eventually do cut the pipes downstairs. Okay, now my next problem is I need to get this dip tube out. And you notice that this is a soldered joint, and so I could just cut it right here and put a new nut on. But the problem is that when I solder it again, I don't want to put the dip, dip tube at risk of being melted by the heat of the soldering. And so I'd much rather solder up higher. Now, in this case, I need to put my joint somewhere between the shutoff valve and here. And I've got this device in the way. Now, this is a T-joint that's used for the humidifier in my furnace. And it's kind of in my way. I don't, especially, I don't want to uh, melt this tube. And so, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to take this off and I'm going to put, put, put my joint right there. As it turns out, I've got some room to move because the piping up here looks to me like I've got a, it'll give me an extra inch or so. And so I'm going to take this device off. I'm going to cut my pipe here. That'll allow me to unscrew the top of the dip tube and take the dip tube right out. So there's what's left of my old dip tube. No wonder I've had so much difficulty. Now the rest is down inside and there's no way I'm going to get it out. But by itself, just sitting there inside the container, I'm not going to be, uh, it's not going to be giving me any troubles. I just need to replace the old with the new and get on with the, get on with the game. Okay, you notice I've got this on the bench vise. The main issue here is that I don't want to burn or damage my new dip tube. And so I want to try and keep as much heat away from the dip tube as possible. So I'm going to solder the first part of this here on the bench. Let it cool down. And then the last solder bit was, would be, just be a short uh, experience. The most important thing about this kind of soldering is always the cleaning. It's really important to make sure this is well cleaned out so that these threads will not leak. So this is Teflon tape. tube goes in. Unfortunately there's lots of room up above. And now we thread it into the
Okay, well we've just changed out the dip tube on my hot water heater. Judging from the state of condition of the original dip tube, I'm sure this is going to give me a performance enhancement. We'll have hotter water and hopefully the water tank will seem to last longer. The last thing I need to do is I need to check my connections and so I'm going to open the water. And we're going to watch for a while. I'm going to watch especially down here. And for the next couple of days we'll be watching down below as well because there could be a pinhole leak down near the insulation that instead of leaking up might leak down. So we'll just have to be real careful with that. Thanks for watching.